Hello everyone. Today I want to continue on with my discussion of the Comedies and Proverbs of Eric Romer, a series of six films that he made in the 1980s. This is the second of the films and this is A Good Marriage, uh, made in 1982. And this is a... For a what I think at least is one of Eric Romer's funniest films and when I was re-watching it the other day I was struck by how easily this could be uh, this could be made into a um, remake a Hollywood commercial Hollywood type comedy I also thought I was also thinking of Carol Lombard and <laughs> screwball comedy of the 1930s because the basic premise is is is, is kind of funny in and of itself Beatrice Roman is playing a uh, young student, 20, I think she's 25, 26. She's living part-time in Paris working on her thesis in art history. Uh, she returns home to Le Mans where her, her uh, family, her, her, her mother and younger sister are living, her best friend is living, and she announces to them, I'm getting married. And they're all delighted. Oh, this is great. You're going to get married. But then they discover she, this is just a declaration. This is just a new... Um, a new manifestation of her, uh, what implied is what they've gotten used to, her impetuosity, her unrealistic uh, dreams, um, part of her personality that um, uh, they're, they're sort of used to, but they're, they're, they're amused by it, but they're also kind of concerned by it. And then Beatrice Roman meets this uh, wealthy, um, busy lawyer at a party and she decides this is the man so she goes back to her her uh, family her best friend and announces i'm getting married to him and they say do you, you you barely know each other and then they discover that of course he has no idea that he is the object that he is he is going to be the groom of this marriage um she's decided to be the pursuer she's tired of being pursued and she's had some some uh, dis she's had dissatisfaction with her relationship with men. In the opening scene, we see a, a kind of funny scene of coitus interruptus, where a phone call is the interruption, and and uh, Beatrice Roman's partner uh, has to answer the phone, and he is married with children, and it's one of his children on the on, on the phone, and uh, and she's tired. She doesn't want to have affairs like this. She wants to have the stability of being married to a man that she can admire and respect, uh, no matter what. And so, uh, again, the, of course, Eric Romer is not a commercial Hollywood filmmaker, and uh, he he wants to, to his desire is to uh, lend a sense of reality to this situation. So he draws deep. He draws very much on the character, uh, the, the actress's own personality. Beatrice Roman, who he knew well, she was one of the Romerians, this group of young women who appeared in his films and were friends, uh, friends for all of Eric Romer's life. And Beatrice Roman had played in Claire's Knee, very significant, prominent role uh, about 10 years earlier. And 10 years after this, she would appear in A Tale of Autumn part of his uh, tale of the, his series on the, on the Four Seasons. Um, so he knew her well, and, and actually Beatrice Roman had a sort, similar kind of situation in her own life in the interval between Claire's and he and a good marriage. Uh, so we have this sense of reality that, that Romer uh, attaches to his film. He's really, Romer is like, like most great directors, he creates a genre onto himself. There's really nobody he's imitated. Romer can be imitated, but uh, he, he can never be equaled in this kind of, in, in this kind of, uh, in his own personal kind of filmmaking. And, and, and also, uh, he has dialogues that would not suit a Hollywood commercial film in which characters analyze in, in, in some detail their attitudes their confusion about love and marriage, um, and and in this in this film we it has literary antecedents. The premise of it, the film has pre, uh, an antecedents in a short story by Balzac, who was a big influence on on Eric Romer uh, in general, and also uh, in, and also a story that Eric Romer uh, wrote in the 1940s when he was in his 20s. 
uh, based on that Balzac story. And these dialogues also relate to the French playwright uh, Maribo, who uh, 18th century playwright, and uh, there was a theater troupe that took extracts from the dialogue in A Good Marriage, integrated them into extracts from a play by Maribo, uh, put on a performance, and you couldn't tell, it said, it was said that you couldn't tell the difference between what was Romer and what was Maribo. But of course, in the context of the 1980s, and uh, in the 1940s and certainly in, in Balzac's time, the attitude towards love and marriage was much different, much more uh, less open than it would be in the 1980s. And Romer always uh, viewed 1968 as the era where everything changed and there was this new openness towards love and marriage. And many of his films in, uh, are, are, are uh, dramatizing the confusion that human beings had with this uh, adjusting to this new openness um, uh, towards uh, sex in general. And he, he also liked to pair these inexperienced actresses with uh, professional actors, actors uh, in, in here, the lawyer that is the pursuit of, uh, of Beatrice Roman's desires is played by Andre Dossier, who had been an, who was, was an experienced actor and had been in Percival, an earlier Romer film, and had a long career as an actor. And he was somewhat frustrated. He, he couldn't understand why he was playing again, uh, with an actress who he thought was kind of amateurish. And, but this tension between the actors really plays into the penult penultimate scene in the film, which I think is absolutely hilarious, uh, where uh, all these desires of uh, Beatrice Roman comes up against reality uh, in an absolutely hilarious scene. And um, um, we uh, and and we also the good we don't ever see the good marriage of the title. Just like in in um, in uh, the Aviator's Wife, we never meet the Aviator's Wife. We never see her. In this film, we never see the good marriage, and this is uh, this is the good the good marriage is the marriage of the best friend played by Ariel Dombasi. She talks she t she describes her marriage uh, to Beatrice Roman in such a way that sets off the whole plot of the story, the whole premise that I'm going to get married. You know now you know I'm tired of all these relationships that I've been having that don't bring me any kind of satisfaction with married men and. Um, and, uh, and Ariel Dombasi has a significant role in the subsequent, the next film in the series, um, uh, Pauline at the Beach. And the younger sister is played by Sophie Renoir, and she's just a teenager here. She only has a couple brief scenes. She will have a more prominent role in Boyfriends and Girlfriends, the last film in the series. And, and she is, uh, if her last name sounds familiar, she was indeed, I believe, the grandniece of... Uh, of Jean Renoir, the film director, and oh, I guess that makes her the great-granddaughter of uh, August Renoir, the Impressionist painter. And she was a pretty good Impressionist herself, it was said, since she gave the most hilarious impressions of Eric Romer that even he could be amused by. The, uh, the Good Marriage ends with a uh, kind of ironic note that can bring a chuckle much, as, much the same as uh, uh, the aviator's wife ended with, um, and um, the next film in this series is Pauline at the Beach, and this is one of Eric Romer's most beautiful films, uh, beautiful looking films. It's the re it marks the return of Nestor Almendros, who had been um, uh, the cinematographer in many of Eric Romer's early films early in Almendros's career, and then in the meantime, he has gone off to Hollywood and made quite a name for himself, and he returned in, in much bigger budget films, and now he returns to um, a low-budget Eric Rumor film, but boy, he makes this film look absolutely beautiful, the colors, and um, so that's the next film in the series. Uh, uh, this is... Uh, um, this uh, wraps up this video, and uh, thanks as always for everybody who listened up to this point. I really do appreciate it. Um, comments are welcome. Uh, you guys take care.